What is up, Squared Nation? Welcome back to No Counters, No Combos. And today we are back in the battle chamber. This is game two of our SS4 Gohan versus Dark Broly. Um, if you saw the video last week, I was able to take game one. This is now game two. As you can see, Anch is starting off by charging an energy and activating his leader skill, putting three 30k battle cards in the drop area and putting the rest at the bottom of his deck. And he also took a life, so he puts himself down to seven. So we did pretty good game one, um, kind of going off the way the deck was built to go off the way it did. So uh, let's see if we can replicate the success in game two. He's going to tap one to play Dark Power Black Mass Saiyan, which is you know really good against my deck, especially with the time agents coming in off their auto skill. So I definitely have to play around that. We're going to go ahead and charge one with the... Um, Return from Darkness, we're going to swing at lead, auto burst three, one, two, three, ooh, we hit two super combos off the burst, draw one card, but we did, we did manage to draw the Trunks Elite Descendant, so Anch is going to go ahead and take that life, we're going to tap the one energy to overrun for Elite Descendant, activate the skill to get a card out of the deck of the Vegeta, and... Obviously, it's something that I have to be careful with because I didn't have another Return from Darkness target. I have to go ahead and grab Revive Ravager, but because Revive Ravager is 15k or less, Black Messian does trigger. So I am going to go ahead and have to pitch two cards from my hand from that skill, I believe. So let's see. Pretty sure I have to pitch, or maybe not. Maybe not because it was off the auto. That's right. It was off the auto. Autos are non-keyword skills. Never mind. My apologies. So Anch is going to take that damage. Go down to five. I'm going to pass turn. He's going to go ahead and charge. Activate leader skills. So now he's in awakening range. He's going to look at top five. Four 30k battle cards. Putting any number of them into the drop area. And the rest at the bottom of the deck. So as you can see... Broly is really good at facilitating its drop area. We did talk about that in game one. But it definitely looks like Anch is off to a better start in game two. He's got his graveyard set up. He's got his awakening condition. He does have a defensive play with the Dark Power Black Mass Saiyan on board, which is going to hinder me a little bit. So he's just giving me more obstacles to play around. He's going to go ahead and swing with his leader into my leader, I believe. Auto, draw. Let's see if there's any... Offensive combos. He is going to go ahead and awaken. Broly is a draw two leader, which I feel like the draw two leaders that we got in set 11. We have Dark Broly and we have the Gohan Icarus leader. I think it's okay for them to be draw two leaders. I think I'm more comfortable with them being draw two leaders now than I was in the beginning because the untapped mechanic is just so powerful. But I did realize that they are draw two leaders for the simple fact that they don't really depend on their energy to build up their board state they can they have auxiliary effects they have um alternative ways of getting battle cards out without paying energy so dark broly obviously has a leader skill of being able to you know facilitate 30k battle cards in the grave or in the drop area and then obviously they can also come out um by activating you know their skills and putting six cards in warp to bring them from the drop area so with that being said, the skillless Gohan does have similar, well not similar effects, but it does have auxiliary effects in bringing cards out from the drop area just with an activate main. So you can kind of see the, you know, the differences there. Obviously in a perfect world, untap to unawaken is my preferred mechanic, but I can see why and for designing purposes, they were made to be draw to. So uh, a lot has actually happened <laughs> with with, with uh, what I've just been talking about. Um, he did, Ansh was able to go into the one drop 30k Broly and activate the Dark Dragon Balls to bring out the six drop. Um, he did pop one of my cards with the SR. And then he also did warp one from my drop and from my hand with the rare. And now he has the 30k blocker on the board. So you can see exactly what I mentioned in game one about Broly being such a good, efficient toolbox where it utilizes its plays without, you know, digging and exhausting resources from deck or from hand. It's just utilizing the drop area to replay and make good 
efficient 30k body so now he's going to be swinging at me with 30k here obviously that's something i'm going to have to take because a i have him tapped out it's it's essentially turn two and i have no energy for defensive purposes and they're just too big to combo out of so right here not swinging with black mass saiyan i think is is definitely the best play he could have made no, don't want to put me in awakening range just yet we did see game one how volatile gohan can be once he's awakened so that's definitely smart on his part and obviously he has a 30k blocker left on board that he can use defensively um so we're gonna go ahead and draw for turn debating on charge here we're gonna go ahead and charge the revive ravager we don't have a drop area um, most of our cards are in the warp from that turn one over on play and the revive ravager that we lost from the battlefield got sent to the warp as well so we're gonna go ahead and auto burst three on attack draw a card other reason to not putting me to four is because now i can't threaten his leader without comboing so definitely you know it's definitely a smart play to make because there's really no reason for you to trade blow for blow with your opponent because you can essentially set yourself up to control the board as efficiently as possible either offensively or defensively with 30k bodies so i'm going to go ahead and swing for 15 combo the majin buu to get him in the drop area he's going to go ahead and super combo vegeta put one at the bottom draw two cards these um these bottom one draw two super combos are so good uh if you're not playing them you're probably playing more of like niche super combos like zamasu or napa if you're doing like a multicolor red green strategy you know th those super combos definitely have merit zamasu might be the best super combo in the game you know that's definitely up for debate but i do believe moving forward the bottom deck draw two super combos will probably take over the meta in my opinion so i'm gonna pass turn by activating majin buu discarding a trunks and drawing two cards i feel like the only way i could defend against these 30ks is drawing negates or putting enough combo power in my hand to where i'm not being threatened for lethal but Anch is in the driver's seat. I do apologize for the glare on his leader, but that definitely is a Dark Broly. He's in control of the game right now. He's charging his third energy. He has his board set up with his 30k battle cards and his 30k blocker. And of course, I mean, it's not too detrimental at this point, but Black Mass Saiyan does have a purpose being there, you know, controlling what I can free play and what I can't. So he's going to go ahead and swing with his 30k Broly. I'm going to just snap take that and go into awakening range because I need to get the four. So it does feel bad awakening on my opponent's turn, but sometimes you just kind of have to do it. We are going to go ahead and max power Kamehameha so that we can negate that broly swing and then put the max power back in my hand unfortunately i can't use max power for the rest of the turn because i activated that auxiliary skill of adding it back to my hand but it does give me a, a removal for next turn if i need it for the blocker because max power for one energy does remove a battle card from your opponent's side of the field that's cost is higher than its current energy so he's going to be swinging at me here it looks like uh, 15 20 25 i'm gonna go ahead and super combo bottom deck draw two to put myself at 20 i need to go up to 30 to survive this attack we're gonna go ahead awaken on tap one draw one so i'm at 25 i need a 5k combo here to survive the attack as you can see i drew into my piccolo unison so i definitely misplayed turn one by not activating the gohan skill to fetch that out of the deck as early as possible sometimes you do have to remember that that's an activate main once per game type thing it does feel bad when you draw into the piccolo if you haven't searched it because it definitely gives you information and having information on what's left in your deck is essential on what you could possibly burst or what you could possibly draw into so that's definitely my misplay for not activating that effect turn one um, but i was able to survive that attack and let's see what Ansh has further for the rest of this turn he's gonna go ahead and tap one to play the toa which is gonna go ahead and grab him the dark dragon ball which basically he just restart the chain all over again broly can play himself from the drop area um by activating i think by by sending six black battle cards from your drop to your warp he could just play himself and then you have the black dragon ball which can go into the sr broly for free essentially so toa searching the ball and broly, be, broly being able to recur himself from the drop area is huge i mean um i know there are cards in the game that have drop area interactions obviously they were probably printed before for cards like saiyan instincts or mission accomplished foo but now you could possibly side those strategies to help combat Broly's efficiency of controlling the drop area, either disrupting plays or shuffling stuff back into the deck to make sure they don't have it there. It is a little tricky because, you know, Broly does facilitate his drop area very well. 
you know, with his own skill, but anything that you can do to slow down your opponent is obviously going to help you either survive or get that extra turn that you need. So, as you can see, Ansh just goes right back into his chain. You know, he used the activate battle on the leader swing to combo the pieces off after he utilized them, and then he was able to replay them with the Toa, One Drop Broly, Dark Star Dragon Ball combination. So, it's very efficient. You know, he does have um, aspects of board control with removal. He does have aspects of hand control with discarding and warping from the drop area. So there's a lot of different things that Dark Broly can do. The Unison is really good also. As you can see, he's tapping one for it. He's going to feed it. So it's got two markers on it. He's going to go ahead and plus so he can continue his plays. And it's just another body. I mean, it's the first Unison that we've had released to us that's a black 15k unison, which is very, very strong because 15k unisons are difficult to deal with. Obviously, anything north of 15k is going to be harder to deal with. But, you know, as long as it has a base of 15, it makes it a lot more strategic for your opponent to target whether they want to go after your board or after your leader or now after your unison. So I feel like Anch is going to spare me here in this position and he's going to go ahead and pass. You know, we're only on essentially turn three. I'm charging my third energy here, and it's not looking good for me. I mean, I have a lower life total. I have no board, and I'm sure I have less cards in my hand because of the hand destruction elements that I've had to deal with with the six drop Broly. So I'm just debating on what it is I'm going to charge here. Uh, as you can see, I've had a couple of cards sent from my drop to my warp. A couple of them have been super combos. A couple of them have been time agents that I haven't been able to burst into the drop area, free playing them. So you can see how it is night and day with Gohan. Game one, it was really efficient. It was really, um, you know, volatile. I popped off the way I wanted to. And now game two, it's just a grind session. Not seeing the pieces that you need. That's what happens when you play, you know, inconsistent strategies. But I'm very stubborn. <laughs> I wanted to throw my head against the wall and make Gohan work as best as I could. So we are going to go ahead and charge that Piccolo Unison, giving us our third black energy here. And just, I guess, try to, you know, pull forward. I mean, it looks like we have similar hand sizes. Anch just definitely has taken over the board here. Controlling not only a unison, but two 30k battle cards, one of them being an efficient blocker, and the black Ma the black Massaian, excuse me, is also causing some headaches for me because that's a one drop that at some point is going to allow him to swing for 15k that I can't really deal with right now. So it does become a mind game here. Obviously, we were playing a best of three tournament, and I did get game one, so. Not that you want to take your foot off the gas in any way, but you kind of, you know, it's one of those things psychologically where you might back yourself into a corner, but then you realize that you still have another game to play. So it's one of those things, um, psychologically speaking. But we're going to go ahead and play the SS4 uh, Gohan Unison. We're going to uptick him, which is... Basically, the reason I like him is because I can uptick him and send my Majin Buu's back from the warp to my drop area so that I can go ahead and then activate the effect again to draw some more cards. So it does help, you know, with drawing cards and being able to do certain things. But we are going to go ahead and overwhelm for Mira, which is going to give Gohan my his third marker and give my leader plus 5k and double strike for the turn. Um, and obviously Mira has always been one of those big beefy boys when he um, overwhelms there. He always, you know, has just been such a huge threat getting plus 5k for each card in a warp. So we're going to tap out for max power to get rid of the blocker. Obviously we want to do some damage with this Mira here, but it's not looking pretty because... <laughs> Anch has two energy open, so that mirror swing can... Om I can almost guarantee that mirror swing getting negated. So we're going to go ahead and swing with our leader, activate the auto to put up to three black battle cards from the drop from the warp into the drop and then draw a card. My leader is sitting at 20k double strike currently. Let's see if there's any combos. We're going to draw that card off the auto. Let's see if I decide to combo up, try to put pressure. Doesn't look like it. We're going to go ahead and get rid of the unison. Mira is going to swing at 30k Broly for, <laughs> I don't want to say infinite, but definitely a lot um, because I have to kind of fight for board here. He's going to go ahead and slap down that instant transmission. Is it instant transmission? Or I think it's 10 times Kamehameha. 
uh, which is the new negate that we got in set 11. It's actually really good. I mean, it negates the, it negates the attack, and then you can up, put it back in your hand um, by paying a black energy and, you know, putting some cards from your, I think it's from your drop into your warp and adding it back, which is kind of like a, a beefed up version of time judgment from back in set, I want to say set three. So as you can see, he did protect his 30k battle card. I was able to knock a marker off of his unison, but at this point, there's not much that I can do to swing momentum in my favor because I can't really interact with his board. Um, he's going to go ahead and charge his fourth energy, which in a black deck, four energy is a lot. There's a lot of stuff you could do, especially one as unique as Dark Broly, where you're not really utilize, utilizing your energy to make battle cards stick to the board. And when you do utilize energy, they're usually one drops. So I don't know why this deck isn't as represented as i think it should be i know recently it might have topped in a webcam event i think the ppg event over the weekend uh it did do well at that event making a top cut appearance but i definitely think as the meta starts to solve itself and obviously with draft box six right around the corner there's definitely a lot of good black support coming out in draft box six so i would not be surprised if you start seeing more dark burly not only on a competitive level but also at a local level as well because it is a pretty inexpensive deck to build except for the sr the sr has definitely skyrocketed in price recently i think it's sitting at like 25 dollars per copy is it super necessary to play the deck maybe i don't think you need to play four copies in the deck but definitely want to play some number of sr dark burlies but that's really the only card you're going to invest in so Ansh is going to go ahead and do his whole one drop Broly combo with the black star dragon balls and play his six drop blocker because why not it's a 30k blocker he's going to go ahead and swing with his battle card 30 into my leader i'm going to go ahead and take that because these boys are super beefy and there's just not a lot i could do defensively you don't realize how much a 30k battle card will wear you down if it's coming at you every single turn I mean, if you're talking straight up card economy, if you're using 5Ks, you have to combo four cards just to survive that one attack. And if they decide to combo up on their 30K, forget it. It's just too much. That's why I think Dark Broly is efficient at getting out these huge bodies. I mean, yeah, they have the unique tag and everything, but that's what makes it balanced, right? Imagine if you could just keep spitting these out. Imagine having a board full of 30k blockers and getting multiple dark broly swings it would just be it would just be too overwhelming so Anch is going to go ahead and attack with his leader activate battle he's going to combo that 5k to put him in the drop area going up to 20 and forcing me to combo up to 25 burning another two cards in my hand because i'm only at two life and i know from game one that he plays champa in his deck so i definitely need to be able to try to control lethal as much as possible he's just going to go ahead and bring out another six drop broly warping a card out of my drop area and one out of my hand just because you know for free essentially because he's got enough targets in his drop six black cards from drop to warp gets you a 30k monster on the board i mean if that's not good then i don't know what is that to me just seems super strong and the fact that this deck is not um, as represented as I think it should be is very interesting in my opinion. Uh, it's definitely not the easiest deck to pilot, but I definitely think that <clears throat> it should be more represented than it currently is. So he's going to swing at me for 30k. I'm just going to go ahead and take it because there's nothing I can do. Like You, could, you guys can see I'm tapped out. He's going to go ahead and make an overround play for one energy. And show me the mirror. Yeah, that's it. I mean, that's pretty much scoop phase at that point. He's just going to swing with his mirror. And I'm just going to go ahead and scoop. And we're going to go ahead and go off to game three. So right now we're going into the rubber game. I'm at one. Ansh is at one. Um, again, hopefully I can replicate the same success that I had game one hitting my curve. But we're going to have to see what happens in game three. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. Stay tuned for next week when we conclude our best of three. Be there or be squared.